<clears throat> That's a good one. Y'all, the temperatures are dropping. The leaves are changing colors. The fall is here. So where do crappy go in the fall? And how do you get more limits in your boat? Let's talk about it. So fall crappy fishing. You know, a deer, a deer hunter is worst nightmare. The temperatures start dropping. The party people on the boats be, be gone. Jet skiers, they be gone. But where do these crappy go and how are we going to catch them, Steven? Is the question I'm going to get asked. So we're going to sit here. We're going to talk about it. It's probably going to be a long-winded video of me talking. Now, I do have a couple fish catches. We caught some hee -haw! the other day over there in Buffalo Creek. So we're going I'm going to post those on the video too. But let's dive right in. If you haven't already, hit the red button right down there. It's free. Just like you're watching this video, hit that thumbs up button for me and let's deep dive and where the crappy go in the fall and how to catch them. In the, today's video, honestly, you have to think about what were the crappy doing at the end of summer? You know, I mean, basically we're still in a summertime pattern. There's a little bit of a fall pattern developing here in South Carolina. Uh, you've got a lot of shad migrating to the back of creeks. You've got a lot of shad migrating down the river channels. So, essentially what this does is this busts up all the summer pattern that you had. <clears throat> where every brush was just stacked with balls of crappy that just don't want to eat. Except like one or two of them. Essentially, they're following the bait. This little guy right here is your main target at the beginning of summer or at the end of spring beginning of summer if y'all remember there's a thing called a shad spawn and when these bad boys spawn you know the, they the crappy the bass uh, any any fish in the lake start targeting them and they they're probably about you know yay big so downsizing using smaller jigs using finesse tactics that you know i love to do that's how i fish 99 percent of the time is going to play a different role this time of year whereas you know with the little stabber i would be taking the first part of it off to make it a one inch bait I'm going to want the one and a half inch or even go all the way up to the snipe beaver and have that two inch profile. The shad's matured. So they're, they're anywhere from an a inch and a half to, to even three inches long. Like you could get away with a three inch jig. Now, I personally don't like anything above two inches, but two inches on a nice three inch hair jig on a number either a number four or five hook is, is killer honestly <clears throat> but so beginning of fall let's start there you know the leaves start changing we talked about that the the night temperatures are low and the day temperatures are hot which is what we got right now so you've got the shad they're going to start migrating the fish are going to follow them. They're going to be spread out. Your little clumps of crappy, they're gone. You may find clumps here and there. So what do you target when they start doing that? So essentially your crappy start here. You know, they're in the only the summertime brush piles. The thermocline is at 25 foot. You know, you're fishing 20 foot brush piles. You know, they're going to follow the shad down this river channel. This river channel swings onto the bank. Like, a, like in the picture we got right on the screen right now. You see where the river channel touches the bank. Alright. Now, you're going to catch a lot there. You find where a river channel touches a bank. That's an amazing spot if you can find brush or some kind of structure or docks or something on that channel. They go down the, the creek channel. 
you want to idle from the beginning of the creek channel all the way to the back if you do not see shad on your electronics get out go to the next creek try that one you got to have bait to have fish and that is just a, a simple way to look at it guys if you don't got the bait you don't got the fish if you don't got a mcdonald's you ain't got no food bada bing bada boo so at the beginning of early fall when you first get these creek channels if there's any points check the points for brush uh, all of that just follow the creek channel until you find the bait and then find the structure for the fish to hold on that's honestly the key to fall fishing finding the bait finding the fish now me personally and and the crappy man we love fishing bridges and now why do we like fishing bridges and honestly it's an, uh, a highway for all the bait the bait has to come through that bridge to go to whatever creek whatever river channel whatever brush pile whatever they're doing they're going to come through a bridge and if that bridge is in deep enough water the crappie are going to be there waiting on them and that's why i we love targeting bridges not only does it keep you cool when it's hot outside but they hold fish so if you got bridges on your lake check them check every pillar crappie are easy to see on side scan on bridges now if you don't have electronics I'm going to talk about that real quick. If you made it this far in the video and you don't have electronics, leave a comment down below. Be like, hey, I appreciate you talking about non-electronics. But honestly, crappy fishing is an electronics game. But for non-electronic users, you have to get there at daybreak. Pick a creek channel. Run down this creek channel, whatever boat you got, kayak. If you don't see shad popping the top of the water, go to the next one. If you start seeing shad popping the top of the water, try to find the deepest water you can and fish docks. That's the easiest non-electronic pattern for... We get out, we understand where these crappie are going. Now, how do we catch them? Now, we've been talking about these for a while. I've been saying that they're going to be released. They're going to be released. They release, guys. Crappymanjigs.com. Right here. Go get you some. The little minnow and a bluegrass. That's a double color. Crappy man green on the bottom, green ice on top. Catches in this video. That's what I was using. Without the, the dog hair on it. I call this color money. It's a pearl on top. Crappy Man Green on the bottom. We've also released Highlight Cricket in the Minna. It's orange with a chartreuse bottom. And all these colors can be bought in every single style we have. So go order you some. I'm going to have them all on there. And you've probably already seen them because I posted a short before this video about having the dual colors. And we also got the dual color box that's still going for 40 bucks. So check it out on the website. Anyways, <sighs> the shad, like I said, they're, they're really, they, they've matured. So using a snipe beaver, which is two inches, is an amazing way to catch them. Uh, you want to use small jig heads still because i don't care what time it is the longer you can stay in that strike zone the better chance you have of catching a fish so 164 132 and 116 are just amazing uh, ours fit every jig we have with a number six hook you just got to find these in the creek channel which i did on the video after this i was actually in buffalo creek on lake murray and i found these on deep brush but they were cruising and the only way you could catch them was to figure out when they were going in the brush and when they went in the brush you got them and i got some heat homes so i'm gonna roll those clips i hope i got y'all to understand where the crappy go in the fall and how to catch them
Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoy the fish catches. There's one. Little guy. Oh. First one of the morning, though. That magic meaner. <laughs> Little dude. Some bigger ones down there, though. Oh, hee haw. There we go. Finally got one. Took me a little bit. Nice. Nice one. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh, I didn't even feel him bite. <laughs> hey buddy. Chunky one. Dang, that's a deformed crappy. Look at, look at his tail. <laughs> uh, so the color I'm using right now, it's called Money. We haven't started selling it yet. But it's pretty much pearl on top, with Crappy Man Green on the bottom. I've been using this color for a while, testing it out, and I've caught some pretty good ones on it so far. But with the water temp dropping, because last week it was like 87 degrees and now it's done got down to 81 so a couple more cool nights and they should start biting a little bit better biting pretty good right now though I will admit they're just really deep the brush I'm fishing is 21 foot and they're biting at probably 15 or so foot. There he is. <laughs> Another nice one. We in, we in the hee haw today. Man, it. <sighs> oh, yeah. Solid 10, 11. Well, now that one's probably about 11, 12. Right in the roof of the mouth where we want them. Nice one. So I didn't really talk about my jig head. Originally I was using a 116, but I broke it off and I didn't bring no more with me. So I'm rocking a 132 on my pole. I wish I had a good enough Garmin that I could do active captain. To show y'all what I'm talking about, chasing these dang things. But basically there's like, four or five brush piles in this little area and they're going in and out of these brush so pretty much i'm trying to intercept the big school of them because that's the one that wants to bite and at the same time i mean if there's a big blob i will try to get him to bite but here comes the school right now so let's see if we can get one of them 
I mean, the school seems to be the one that is active, if that makes sense. Come on, buddy. That one didn't bite, so now we got to back up. It's so hard to see a 132 when you get past like 10 feet. Should be in the perfect depth to go right over this big blob when I back up. Should be. No, 132 done lifted up. You want some, you want these fish I got? Crappy. <laughs> All right. <laughs>